maybe it's not yet clear how you solve this, uh, this problem. So let's go for the last uh, few minutes here, go through how you set this up and solve it in like an equation solver. Um, so let's take <clears throat> our uh, example and now make it a little bit more general. So we're going to impose an energy balance on a single node where that node is interchanging with n surfaces. So no longer just three surfaces, let's do it for n surfaces. So what I'm gonna do first is draw the resistance network that is uh, represented here. So let's say over here we have some EB for surface I. Then I have a, a resistance, right? So this would be R, RS for surface I. And then this node is J for surface I, right? Or radiosity. And we have uh, heat transfer Q dot for surface I. Um, then that radios the radiosity node, that's the thing that's interacting with all the other radiating surfaces. And we have N of them. So I would first draw up here, right? You have uh, resistance going to J, uh, let's call this sub J. Right? And this would be resistance R uh, G from I to J. Uh, and then the heat transfer here would be Q dot. Another resistance, and that's going to the next node. So this would be J to, let's call it J plus one. Right? And you also have R G I to J plus one. You have the heat flow uh, there as well. And then let's say, you know, dot, 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 you just keep doing this. You have another resistance here going to J sub N. So this would be R G from I to N. And you have the resistance R, oh, sorry, you have the heat transfer here, Q dot from I to N. Okay, so again, what I did here is I'm looking at a single node, uh, call that node I, and then you're doing an analysis on that one node, and from that you can develop a, a set of equations, or a, a few equations. You would then repeat this, right, for every node I. So what, you, know, you solve this in ease, or you solve it in some piece of software, you're doing this inside like a duplicate loop, right? You don't wanna just write this out by hand probably, you wanna, have it automated so you can extend it and so on. Okay, so summarizing what we have, we have at, uh, at each node, we have a heat flow. So the heat flow at each node um, is given by this, it's equation uh, Q dot I is equal to EB I minus J I over R S I. Right, that's capturing this effect here, this, this bit of the resistance here. So I know that the heat, heat transfer, Q dot I, is related to the, the black body and radiosity uh, over the surface resistance, okay? So we, we have that. Uh, the other thing that we have, or the other thing we can use here is that there's a known heat transfer between nodes. So heat transfer between nodes. Uh, and that would be given by um, uh, Q dot I to J is equal to E, uh, sorry, this is not right. This is, should be J I minus J J, J J over R uh, G I J. Uh, and it should be um, repeated like that, that sort of I to J is gonna be have to be repeated for all the connections. You know what I mean? Like, so you pick that node I, and then you have all those different resistances going off of it. All of those pathways are captured by one of these equations. So you repeat this a bunch of times. And then to get the total heat transfer, you sum them all up. Okay, so then the energy balance looks like this. Uh, the energy balance is coming in. You have EB. I minus J I over R S I. Uh, energy, that's Q dot I, right? That's what's coming in from the left. That has to equal all the stuff that's leaving from the right, which is the sum of all those radiosity pieces. So this is the sum for index J from one to N of uh, J I minus J J 
over R G I to J. Okay, so this is for all I uh, in the range from one to N. Okay, so this is actually how you'd set it up, right? To, to solve this, this kind of problem, you need a, uh, a duplicate loop on your I value. So you're duplicating this equation up here for every single index I, and then for every index you expand this out and you say from I equals whatever it is to this other loop J, right? And J is gonna add up all those other pieces of radiosity. So note that you're always expressing things in terms of like the radiosity and exchange between that and then relating it to the heat flow across the surface. All right. I get that this is really abstract, <laughs> uh, but uh, if you can somehow like tie physical concepts, black body is a theoretical maximum. J is the, the actual radiation leaving and it's the sum of what's hitting plus what's being emitted. Right? You can tie all that stuff together, uh, it, it's not too bad. Right, you can kind of get a handle on it. Um, questions? Uh, couple, yeah, right here. I guess I'm still a little confused on how do we actually find J? Because the leaves feeds on J. We don't know how to find G. Right, so this, uh, the question is how do you actually find J? You need G and things like that to find it. What you end up doing in this this whole approach is we're simultaneously solving for all of these values, meaning I can't know J in isolation. I can't know J unless I know G from another surface. And if I don't know J from the other surface, I don't know what G is, right? So it's a big circle. And the only way to solve this is to say I've got the right number of equations and the right number of unknowns, and they're all defining the right thing, right? I put, I put them into the the equation solver and I solve it all at once. Then what you end up with is, okay, I, I can solve for what J is, but then from that I maybe have to back out what EB was. Once I know EB, then I can solve for temperature. And so you kind of, uh, you're solving for these really abstract radiosity pieces in the model and then from that you have to kind of step backwards to the physical things that you really care about. Yeah. So the equations that I put up here are enough to solve for radiosity. It, it, you put in the emissivity, you, the properties, you put in the area properties, the view factors, and so on. You can use uh, these equations to solve for it. Uh, what, did you have a question? Same question, yeah. What's the subscript under the first uh, The one, the very top right? So that is Q dot I is equal to EBI minus JI over RSI. Sorry. My, the magnetic field in my pen all suddenly got strong. RSI. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Um, one other really quick note. I think I can go through this very quickly. Um, what happens when you have an adiabatic surface? And this is it's kind of helpful. It, it gives you a kind of a perspective on what's actually physically happening with radiosity. So let's revisit our problem here. But instead of allowing heat to flow out through Q.2, let's arbitrarily say, okay, this surface here uh, is zero. Like or it's adiabatic. There's zero heat transfer out of uh, node two, into out of node two. So how does that change our problem? Well, um, that means that there's, you know, here, like there's, there's no heat transfer across this resistance. And if there's no uh, heat transfer across the resistance, what does that say about the potentials on either side of that resistance? Right? If, if you have a circuit and you have, uh, you, you have zero current across the resistor, what does it say about the voltage on either side of the resistor? It's the same, it's equal, right? Well, that's weird. <laughs> like, think about it, that's weird. Like, so you're saying, I, I changed the heat flow and all of a sudden, my radiosity node, J2, behaves like it's a black surface. It's kind of weird. But it, it's, it's, it just comes out of the energy balance, right? So in this case, we're saying J2 
is equal to EB2, even if emissivity is not one, all right? So it's, it's instructive because it helps you realize that what's happening in the radiosity is not really intuitive. All right, you have to solve the set of equations. It's not like you can look at this. You can't look at this problem and know that J2 is always gonna be bigger than EB2 or vice versa, right? It's gonna come out of the balance between all the surfaces playing together, exchanging radiation and so on. 